It's not exciting, it's not glamorous, but compost is the engine that drives your garden. Today, we're gonna get down and dirty and learn about how to make your own compost. Let's go. Welcome to The Greenhouse. I'm Amy Sidron, the horticulture teacher here at Fort Vancouver High School. Today, we're talking about composting. What exactly is it? Simply put, it's organic material, like plant or food waste, that has been decomposed and recycled to be used as a fertilizer. Composting goes back at least as far as the early Roman Empire. And now, cities like Portland, Seattle, and San Francisco require people to sort their trash to facilitate composting on a large scale. You can compost lots of different organic material. Some decompose better than others. So here's a list of those that decompose really well and those that take a long time. Here are things that decompose quickly. Grass clippings, raw vegetable waste from your kitchen, like carrot tops or orange peels, tea bags, coffee grounds, soft green prunings, animal manure from herbivores, like cows, horses, or lots of us now have chickens. Now let's take a look at items that are okay to compost, but will take a bit longer cardboard and paper, tough hedge clippings or woody prunings, sawdust or wood shavings, leaves, eggshells, natural fibers like wool or cotton, hair or fingernail clippings. Now, what shouldn't you compost? Meat, fish, or cooked food, bread that had butter on it, pasta, bones, anything that will attract animals like raccoons or rats, milk products, cat litter or dog feces, disposable diapers. So there's two main different types of composting systems. One is enclosed if you live in the city, and the other is a three-bin system that's more open. Let's go check those out so you can see what would work for you. So this is an example of a three-bin compost system. This system is really good if you have a small farm or you're not going to be composting any food because it's open. And this is definitely an area where animals could get into. So this is for non-food compost. Things like weeds. These are from the garden from yesterday. Old peas. They're dried out, and you want to have green and brown mixed in, and then you would add some soil on top to help decompose and speed it up a little bit. As that breaks down, we're going to turn it over, and as you turn it over, it would break down again, and then eventually the third process is where it turns into the compost we're looking for to actually add to the garden. The nutrients that feed our plants and give them the qualities that we need and also holding on to water. So this is really important nutrients for our soil. Now we're gonna check out the other bin for households. That's a better opportunity for you to compost when you actually have food material. Let's go check that out. So this is an example of a compost system that you would use at your home. This is the type you could use lettuce, kale, any type of food that we talked about earlier, not things like bones that would attract animals like raccoons that would putrefy, which means basically it breaks down to this really nasty, oozy stuff that we don't want to have in our compost. So we put that in, and again, these are greens, and we want to add some browns, some dried grass clippings, things like that, walnuts. Someone gave us these a long time ago from their farm, and they're still here, but they're going to break down. And even if I dig down just a little bit, we can see that there's some nice compost in here. And that again is that essential nutrient that we want to add back to our soil to feed our plants and make our soil healthy. So this type of compost system is great because you start adding from the top and eventually it has a little door on the bottom that you pull up and that is where you can actually get your nice compost from. So unlike the three bin system, you don't have to keep turning it and turning it. This actually just breaks down by itself as you keep adding and adding to it and it gets smaller and smaller and heats up. That's why it's black, so it cooks, it really gets nice and hot in there. And then you can actually just dig out your compost. It's really convenient for the home gardener. These home bin systems are really affordable, usually between $35 and $50. You can get them through the city, or you could also get them at places like Home Depot or a local farm market. But definitely check with the city first because they're usually $10 to $20, maybe even $30 cheaper. And that's a really easy way to go about getting one of these. Before we go, let's talk for a moment about the plant sales we have here at the greenhouse at Fort Vancouver and other Vancouver high schools. 
Horticulture students are learning how to cultivate and care for plants, and when it's time to harvest, you can reap the rewards. The flowers, vegetables, and other plants we grow are high quality and cheaper than the big box stores. Plus, you're supporting local kids. Check in with the closest high school to your home to see when their sales are happening. We're just about out of time, but if you want to learn more about composting, check out all the online resources or the local resources like Washington State University Extension or Oregon State University Extension, where you can actually call and talk to someone in person about your gardening questions or composting questions. Until next time, I'm Amy Sidron from The Greenhouse.